Hello, everybody, and welcome to this webinar, and thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is uh, Giovanni Tumarello, and I am one of the founders here at Siren, and uh, now I'm a chief evangelist, so I'll be working to, in you know, in this webinar and also in the next webinar, so I'll be working to uh, talk and, and explain how people are using Siren uh, around the world for different purposes, and with me, uh, hopefully I'll have, uh, you know, uh, a set of fantastic people. And today we have definitely the first one, Jeremy Turner, <laughs> uh, head of uh, threat hunting at uh, Q6. And uh, Q6 is, uh, you know, I'm going to let Jeremy introduce himself in a second, but uh, you might have uh, heard uh, of in a, an announcement that we made just about a month and a half ago of a nice partnership that we have with Q6 Cyber. We are pretty excited uh, because today you're going to see for the first time what this announcement is about in practice because we announced an infrastructure base on Siren and Q6 uh, for uh, protecting critical infrastructure. And today you're going to get a glimpse at that. So definitely, uh, hopefully it's going to be pretty interesting. But uh, Jeremy, I'll, I'll leave it to you for an intro about yourself and Q6. Yeah, so um, I'm Jeremy Turner. Um, at Q6 Cyber is head of threat hunting. Uh, Q6 Cyber is a cyber threat intelligence firm. We offer uh, cyber threat intelligence to many different types of organizations. Uh, we cater specifically to a lot of uh, services in the financial services industry, uh, things like payment card data and, and other types of uh, threat intelligence, not just uh, specifically cyber. Um, uh, prior to uh, Q6, I worked for a cyber MGA called Coalition. Uh, it's a cyber insurance uh, company. And uh, prior to that, I was with an international affairs uh, consulting firm, which was Martin and Crumpton Group, uh, based in Washington, DC. Great, thank you, thank you very much. So, to um, you know, investigative search meets advanced threat intelligence data. Uh, Q6 is a provider of intelligence data, right? You want to tell us something about it? Yeah. So we we collect uh, in in. Uh, productize a lot of different types of cyber threat intelligence. Some of that threat intelligence is uh, describing uh, malware infections or malware botnets. Um, some of that is describing uh, different types of data that's used by criminals to conduct fraud. Uh, another type of data is uh, used by criminals to kind of affect uh, business email compromises or do the kind of the man in the mailbox type attacks or invoice manipulation. Uh, so we have products that are kind of tailored towards each one of these kind of primary risk factors for organizations to address a different type of uh, cyber risk. And we'll get into some of those examples of, you know, how we go about doing that and how we do a lot of analysis in Siren to uh, to identify those risks. Great. And we're going to see that in action very shortly. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, go ahead. Um, I assume that the people can see my screen. I just don't have a feedback about that, but I assume that I can, I can see it. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. Thank you very much, Jeremy. So, um, yeah, so first of all, let me tell you a second about uh, the mission because it's uh, absolutely fundamental. That's what it's all about. So we're here to, uh, you know, uh, develop software uh, to keep people, assets, and networks uh, safe through search-based investigative intelligence. What do we mean by search-based? Well, we are a solution that's absolutely natively operating on top of Elasticsearch, which is um, uh, probably the, the world most famous and used uh, search-based platform. And everything that you can do in, in, uh, in Siren is based on search capabilities. So be that a graph, uh, you know, we're going to see graph analysis, link analysis, you're going to see dashboard and everything else is, is about search. Uh, we work in several sectors, you know, intelligence, law enforcement, uh, fraud, inside the threat. And across all of these organizations, it can be, you know, state-wise, uh, statewide, or it can say be inside the companies or banking. Cyber threat is obviously everywhere, and it's something that needs to be uh, tackled. And we're going to see today why Siren is a really interesting application for doing this. So in terms of structure, quite simple. We're giving some interest now. Uh, then uh, we're going to take a look at you know how Siren allows a fusion of multiple streams of data, both coming from uh, the internal infrastructure, internal cyber infrastructure that you might have inside an organization, your intrusion detection systems, your internal rules, your Windows logs and whatnot, and external data sources such as 
Q6. In fact, we're going to have two demos. One is more focused on the analyzing and correlating internal demo uh, data. And this one is uh, the Siren Elastic Security ECS, which I'm going to give you a glimpse of. And the second one is the demos that uh, Jeremy will show you, which will be pretty much uh, about this. So this is the announcement you might have read uh, in June. And uh, it talks about how Q6 and, uh, and Siren have partnered to create uh, and infra, you know, a solution for uh, defense of critical infrastructure. And that's really, really interesting because um, you can not only, if you are from the inside of a company or organization, of course, uh, you protect based on information that you have from the inside, but also looking from the outside, you can, uh, you know, warn other uh, organizations that there might be threats and they should be taking precautions. And that's what we're going to be uh, seeing today. So yeah, uh, with this, I will switch to my demo and uh, give you a glimpse of how a Siren deployment for cybersecurity looks like. Now, remember, um, I mean, I say remember because this is something that I say pretty often, so you might have heard me say, uh, say before, that Siren pretty much takes the shape of the data that you have. And, uh, and by the way, I haven't said that. I say now, uh, I by no means consider myself, Giovanni Tomarello, an expert in cybersecurity. So Jeremy, if I say so, <laughs> please stop me. And, uh, you know, I take my hats off. I'm an academic by background. Therefore, I, I like to be um, an expert whenever I'm discussing something. However, this is not being built by me. It's been built by our security engineers. And um, one of the core things about this is that basically, I think they're probably it's very difficult to have two security deployment, two cybersecurity deployments of cyber uh, or of Siren that look alike. Why? Because every organization have their own uh, streams of information. I mean, in this case, you have a Siren where on the left you have all sorts of int internal uh, feeds of information from uh, endpoints, events of all nature to Windows logs uh, uh, to uh, to many others that I'm going to show you now. And of course, also dashboards that might have information coming from the outside, in this case, intelligence or even information com coming for the, uh, from the MITRE attack model that we will see. So of course, everybody who has seen Elasticsearch used for cybersecurity know that you can have dashboards and dashboards are absolutely fantastic for searching or for drilling down and zooming in on certain uh, anomalies that they might be become evident from the analytics. But the, the really interesting part of Siren is the ability to interconnect and correlate this, which leads us to the beating heart of a Siren deployment, which is basically the data model. Uh, in the data model of a Siren deployment, you have all the data sources here and you can you know, see very uh, well-known data sources for cybersecurity. For example, you might have the Suricata, um, you know, uh, intrusion detection system. You might have system logs. You might have Windows logs, I was saying. But you might also have the Elasticsearch security product itself producing signals from a set of complex rules, therefore uh, pointing you at certain anomalies that you might want to investigate. But the unique uh, element of uh, Siren is the ability of operating on top of an associative data model. So um, this is the associative data model that is driving this very Siren deployment. And what is the glue that connects together all these uh, data sources? Well, the glue is the data model, which often often hinges on concepts, which are um, uh, concepts such as IP address, for example. Uh, for those that are familiar with the Siren data modeling, uh, you know that there are two kinds of uh, entities conceptually. One are called entity tables, and they're basically streams of data and records. Each one of these is basically a collection of records. And the other one is entity identifiers. What, what are entity identifiers? They're basically strings or values they could be an email address or a hash or an IP address. And you can see how this model makes big, big use of this, like IP addresses. So you could get an alert from Suricata and then see that the source IP, it's the destination IP uh, of some event detected on an endpoint or, or a similar. Um, or an email endpoint might be uh, connected to a certain user email, which then uh, can lead 
to us another suricata detection or uh, to other elements in this data model. And eventually by uh, working, you know, for example, in this case, we even have the Q6 uh, data, data stream here, um, uh, but uh, which we, I'm not going to demo because that's actually Jeremy's presentation. So, but uh, in, uh, when you have an internal system, like in this case, the CM signal comes from the Elasticsearch security uh, product, uh, then, uh, you know, the CM signal allows you to then move around and investigate, you know, what is the user that was currently logged via the Windows logs, via uh, whatever the hash uh, of, the, uh, of the executable was, and so on. All the way to moving from internal data, as you can see, this is internal data, CM signal, Suricata endpoints, to uh, external sources of information, like for example, Q6, like I mentioned, but also in this case, the MITRE data model, which contains a collection of a uh, course of actions, for example, what could be some actions that could remedy uh, a certain elements that might have been a certain element of threats that might have been uh, detected. And now we're going to see that uh, in action with a simple uh, example. So yeah. from, uh, yes, Jeremy? Uh, I was just, uh, just uh, on, the, on the data model. Uh, so I was going to say, so what, one of the ways to think about this is anytime you're copying and pasting a value from one field into another search to search for another type of data and a lot of SIM solutions, you know, you're pivoting around uh, different facets of an alert, looking at, you know, IP address or host name and trying to investigate uh, more about these types of events. So one way to think about this data model is, you know, a replacement for all the copy and pasting and pivoting and, you know, very long search queries you would have to write in order to kind of transition from uh, one set of data to another. Data to another. Uh, the data model kind of ties all these things together. So uh, once you build the data model or you understand those frequent searches or copy paste moves you're making, that's a good indication that that, that should be a relation in your data model. Um, and that's something that can, you know, when now when you search for one of those indicators, you add it to the graph, you could automatically expand that to see those relationships contextually without having to remember to search for all these things. Exactly. And this is what's happened here, for example. So I am in the SIM signal dashboard where I have 37,000 signals coming from the Elastic Security product, therefore pointing at something that maybe should be observed. And as you can see, it's connected to four MITRE tactic, tactic in the MITRE attack model or uh, five attack uh, patterns, or you can take the IPs are connected to six, six of the host IPs and whatnot. So by clicking here, I would be able to immediately uh, pivot and go and see if this IP, for example, is the destination IP of some of our endpoint events or uh, whatnot, what's required. Sometime using this navigation, this lateral navigation, you know, you can click and go and see what are the MITRE tactics that are related to these events. And you can do this pivoting at the scale of even uh, tens or hundreds of millions of records or more. Here, for example, just to give you an idea, I have uh, 1.8 billion forward DNS records and uh, this installation is absolutely not afraid of this uh, big number. But and another way, which is super powerful for um, cybersecurity analysts, and I think uh, we have a great fan here with Jeremy, is being able to do this. Of, of course, being able to navigate from a dashboard to dashboard is, is completely um, it, it's super useful sometimes when you have to do a large scale correlation between events. But being able to do this analysis on the graph might even be more interesting. And this leads me to my example where, for example, I'm interested in, you know, I see that there is a certain tactical privilege uh, escalation. So I might be interested in investigating these events of privilege escalation. And I see that there is a few over time. And now maybe I want to analyze them in link analysis. So what I do here is I take these 12 events that we had and bring them into the analysis. Here, uh, you have a set of tools to operate. So for example, I could just, well, the easiest thing I can do is uh, do this and do an expand uh, by relation, where for example, I'm interested in the IP address, in the host names. I might be interested in the in the in some of the process IDs as well, which could be interesting, and definitely in the attack pattern in the attack pattern. This gives me a uh, picture uh, that um, that uh, you know could 
seem complex, but you know it's always possible to organize the graph and, and get an idea. So we have mostly uh, one of our hosts, which have been generating all these uh, warnings. And uh, of course, there are some IP addresses connected. This is the same IP basically in different uh, uh, notations. What's what's interesting is that you know you get to a certain uh, pattern in the in the mitre and you might be interested in knowing if there is some uh, remedies or uh, something that can be done about it so um i can expand uh, the relations uh, from this uh, this pattern escalation of privilege and then uh, selecting selecting these uh, expand further to see for example possible remedies possible malware possible attackers this, uh, this little um, uh, patches or uh, band-aids are uh, some of the, okay, you can you know turn on the tooltip and it will give you information that might be useful to understand how to remedy this or what are the latest malware and groups that are exploiting such technique. Now I've chosen a very, very simple example, but this one works uh, you know across across the board. Um, Jeremy, uh, does this make sense to you then? And uh, can you take it from here and show us more advanced things, including your data, Q6 data? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the one of the really cool things that's you know that's that you know it was demoed here is uh, being able to associate certain event types with the MITRE attack framework. Uh, because I think this really helps uh, an analyst understand which patterns of activity do I really need to pay attention to in this sea of alerts, which things uh, match known uh, groups of threat actors and adversaries. And if we see lots of techniques that relate to one group, uh, you know, in a short period of time or for one host, you know, this is a very strong indication that we, you know, we may have some, some very serious things going on. And so while some of those uh, alerts are very like high noise, high volume, uh, being able to look at them in the context of all the different relations and how they relate to a certain group of threat actors or certain tactics and techniques um, is very useful uh, for for really kind of doing some triage and understanding what's going on in a host. So and by very... the way, you you mentioned something really important: the time time element. This is you know you might uh, the, I haven't shown this, but oops, no, I, I don't have anything on the map. But you can always see this uh, you know on a time on a time frame uh, point of view. So maybe just an event in August. You know, was only triggering just a few of this, therefore making uh, making the 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 picture uh, you know different. And uh, you know, so you can always go back in time and analyze how things have changed uh, over time uh, thanks to the system. Okay, uh, so Jeremy, I think I'll uh, uh, you know leave it to you now. You have oh, about we, we have uh, one one question. Uh... Go for it. Yeah, the recording uh, will be made yeah. available. Absolutely. So, yeah, Absolutely. And, and also the um, there's a question um, to elaborate a little bit about the uh, the mechanism behind the uh, the MITRE uh, tactics te and techniques mapping to particular events. Um, and so these are actually uh, coming from the signatures that are in the in this case like Suricata um, and and other uh, kind of event like logs, uh, also coming from the Elastic uh, Security product. Uh, that have the um, the specific attack technique uh, labeled with the event type, and so that's how it's being associated with yeah. the, uh, the MITRE attack framework. By the way, I noticed that we have only ten more minutes scheduled. I think we can take a few more minutes, Jeremy, if your demo mm -hmm. is interesting. And yeah. uh, so don't don't worry, don't rush. I mean, take your take your time. Okay, yeah. please go ahead. Okay, so uh, we kind of looked at the data model for the internal kind of network, uh, you know, view, and so now we have this data model, which is going to kind of show us uh, how we relate the uh, Q6 data to um, to other types of entities. So, in our data model, we're we're kind of looking at um, it, looking at uh, you know this threat intelligence, which is kind of like the external, the outside in view of an organization. So this threat intelligence is coming from a wide variety of sources and different types of malware infrastructure and uh, all kinds of bad places on the internet. And the, the point of this is to kind of understand, you know, if we have uh, certain detection processes running inside a network, 
maybe there's a, an external view from the threat actor's perspective, kind of looking over the shoulder of the uh, of the adversary that would help enable those teams to uh, define new events and interesting things that they may not otherwise be able to detect in a lot of these different scenarios. So as, as threat actors evolve and change their techniques, sometimes it's good to learn from the threat actors and what the latest techniques are uh, to help inform some of those patterns that we're trying to explore on the, uh, the internal network defense model. So this is kind of an overview of the, um, you know, the kind of the scale and the scope of the, the types of data that Q6 is collecting. And I think probably something helpful in this case would be to kind of narrow this down to a couple of different scenarios. So I guess a good scenario to look at is, you know, if we're a state agency uh, for, you know, Colorado or, or Tennessee, we can kind of start, start to filter out maybe some of the risk that's relevant to uh, a state entity that might be charged with oversight of some type of critical infrastructure uh, in this region. And so we can do this, you know, kind of pretty quickly, um, you know, in, the, in this model by uh, filtering down by, we can just create a little filter for a uh, state. So we can filter down by Tennessee. And then maybe in this case, we wanna look at uh, nuclear power plants or nuclear power authorities. And so we can pick out one of these here, filter down to a, an entity. And then really quickly, I'll just start, you know, looking through the, um, the knowledge graph and kind of using uh, some of the capabilities in this graph to start exploring uh, our threat intelligence data sets as it relates to, uh, to this specific entity. So we have a, you know, a couple different uh, entities that we can see here that are related. Um, and one of the things that we um, often do is start to enumerate this entity or start to look and, uh, and see what, what types of other data do we have that can help us understand more about the attack surface and exposure uh, for this, this entity here. Um, so in one of those cases, we might want to pick out the uh, the other network infrastructure that belongs to this this entity to, to TVA, um, and then in our case, because we have a couple different types of data that we use to associate those entities, we have created a uh, an entity identifier. So because we have various sources of how we kind of get this this information uh, that describes network address ranges and ASNs that belong to this company or this entity. Um, we've created an NTA identifier to kind of um, bring all those things together under under one kind of common join. So we can say that all these things kind of belong to the same kind of category, or it's the same type of selector that we're using in each case. Um, and so now we can just, you know, choose the one IP range value that kind of represents that entire set. And we can start to look and see what threat intelligence data that we have that has, you know, these, these are all indicators of malware that's egressed from, from these networks. Um, and we can do the same thing for the, uh, for the domain. We can look at maybe some, uh, some malware that only contains a domain value for this entity. And then, um, you know, similar to, you know, how we were looking at the, uh, some of the, the maps and, uh, you know, time filters that are available. Um, you know, this is a really good one to gain some context. So, we have uh, one hit in Barcelona, which is kind of interesting. Maybe somebody is traveling on vacation. Um, but then we also see some, some kind of uh, results that are really kind of around the core infrastructure for the entities that we would expect to see. Um, we can also look at these things over a timeline, uh, which is kind of useful to see you know, contextually which one of these are you know, most recent um, events and you know, which ones maybe should we focus our attention on as an analyst. So. Um, you know, this is kind of a, a really quick example of how we can go from a very large kind of, um, you know, perspective on uh, a state or a specific industry class or a critical infrastructure uh, down to a specific entity and start to look and see and model what does that entity look like and how does our threat intelligence relate to that entity. Um, or, or as an analyst kind of, you know, defending this organization um, or maybe with a state mandate. Uh, with a lot of organizations, it's going to be really useful to be able to automatically find out things of like, you know, what selectors are related to this entity and how does that relate to the threat intelligence data that we have. Um, so it's a, a really quick example. Um, I'll happy to take any questions. I don't want to take up all the time here, Gio. So I'll, tur I'll turn it back over to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Jerry. I mean, uh, this is uh, so intense to me every time I see it. I think I've seen this a few times and I'm always like, oh my God. So I, I, I thank uh, 
I know that uh, we we have a, in a, in a European country we've just started deploying something very similar to this, uh, which is about protecting exactly uh, nationwide some of the most critical infrastructure. We're talking uh, power plants, but also strategic industries and whatnot. And I think this is um, this is exceptionally interesting. Uh, there is a, one question that I got is that once you have this picture, uh, this information picture, what would be a next step? Yeah, that's a good question. So in this case, um, an analyst would want to start to investigate each one of these alerts. Um, and we have a lot more details that we can show, uh, you know, probably not good for this context of this call. But it, it, in each one of these alerts, there's very specific information about each one of these malware infections that contain things like machine names, domain names, IP addresses, um, that'll help a, an analyst identify you know, where is this infection? Who is the user that's affected? Uh, what's the relative risk posed by this type of malware with this user in this organization? Um, and so there's a lot of contextual judgments that can be made um, by, uh, you know, digging deeper into these types of events and a lot of the metadata that's available. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of good cases where um, uh, there may be an, an initial malware infection that happens and an analyst may get a tip from us or you know, the threat intelligence from Q6, and they'll be able to investigate this alert very quickly. And maybe this is uh, an opportunity to remediate this type of infection or event before the threat actors have a chance to kind of move laterally within the organization or kind of act on their objective. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to kind of uh, close the gap there before any kind of real damage has been done. Um, I see another question here about uh, being able to export the data model. Um, Thank you, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, the, the question is about can we export the data model? What would be the um, structure of the data? So, it, it, yes, you can export the data model. It would be a Siren export format. It is a JSON where you have all the objects about what we call the entity table. Uh, so, it will be the pointer to the Elasticsearch indexes and uh, the, the index patterns. And then you'd have other objects that represents relations. So, it will not export a data model like in OWL or something like that, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's our own format. Then you can import it again in a different data space because we haven't looked at the um, uh, kind of case management that's built in, in in Siren, as in you can open an investigation like a data space is called. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think, Jeremy, you know, you save a lot of graphs, right? You know, whenever you find something interesting, you can save a graph and you can then pull it back. Um, and so as part of as part of that, uh, all, all those objects are is possible to export and import them. Yeah, it's very, it's very useful, even even uh, as an analyst, a lot of uh, the analyst time you, you, know, you find a really good, interesting event that needs to be elevated or communicated. Um, I know that I used to spend a lot of time creating Visio diagrams uh, to properly communicate like what's going on. And, and being able to have a visual representation of the events that you're analyzing is incredibly useful as a communications tool. Um, so when you're trying to communicate risk or uh, help understand priority or, or you know, communicate very technical things to non-technical audiences, um, it's very useful to be able to have uh, a very easy way to generate these types of visualizations that can aid in communication. Great. So we are pretty much on time. So I, I think I will go ahead and conclude. Before uh, before saying this, um, I think I want to conclude by saying that uh, it, maybe you can confirm this or not, but I don't think cybersecurity is getting any easier. Like the world is becoming a more a place where more and more wars are fought online and unfortunately offline. And uh, complexity is increasing dramatically. And nowadays the attack that you know, small businesses or infrastructure or even large organization, you know, the, the surface of attack can be really complex to understand. And this form of uh, you know security uh, solutions, whereas uh, somebody like, for example, even even a state or 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 a for you know can analyze and help companies can help the the, the organization uh, protect themselves. I, I think this is very very useful because obviously you can't expect every organization to have somebody such as yourself being able to do this sort of analysis so being able to centralize this and do it in parallel for a lot of organizations uh, you you know i think it's 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 really the way to go yeah there there is one more connection or question that came up which was um you know uh, any plans uh, for an integration with maltigo for the graphs analysis or splunk sentinel curator um 
So the, one of the things I will say, you know, specifically about Meltico, um, so one of the things that Siren supports is web services. So you can invoke a, um, a web service API. So this would be something like you want to query maybe any one of the different APIs that are available in something like Recon NG, or be able to look up information from a, a web service or virus total. Um, you know, Siren supports web service integration that I use quite a bit uh, for those types of things. Um, and then maybe uh, we haven't shown it in the demos, but you can do right yeah. mouse button <laughs> and be able to call. Um, you can call a web service live from some of the information. Uh, you know, it, we're, it's not as as fancy as advanced as Maltigo, but you know the direction is is there because obviously you want to you know bridge the two worlds. You want to bridge the world of uh, you know lookups with the world of big internal data and the 1.8 billion records that you can analyze and search as, as we were seeing with the world of being able to look up you know information online. So definitely we're going in that direction. We have um, you know, a few integration with other software. I mean, you're not mentioning the, the question is not mentioning it, but uh, um, analyst notebook, for example, I mean, that's more for police maybe, but uh, also for cybersecurity it's used by some, so you can export import into analyst notebook. And uh, in general, you can export any data set in Siren as a CSV. We yeah. haven't shown the alerting, but it's all available. Every dashboard, you can create even a very sophisticated correlation filter where you have a join and says, if any of my uh, firewall uh, have an event where uh, some of the hosts are trying to reach one of the websites, which is currently on a list of um, you know, uh, suspicious IP addresses, indication of compromises, then send an alert. And we have some videos on our website uh, also covering that. So you might want to take a look at our videos also on, all. on the website. There are a few articles on the blog. You can look for cyber in the blog search engines, but also on our YouTube channel. Now, this said, I want to take, thanks absolutely everybody for coming. There's a great, you know, a lot of people joined today. So that's fantastic. And uh, thanks again, Jeremy, very much for this presentation. Talk to you soon. Thanks for having me.